Yo, what's up guys, this is Why Not Be Reckless, AK Why Not Be Cast, and one of the HGS commentators, analysts, and grassroots content creators, and we have another HGS report where we're doing two parts. One, we're doing a bit of an interview with our special guest, Bejesus of Passion United, and then we're going to keep him on for part two, where we kind of break things down a little bit and do a bracket review for all the from all the action that happened literally just yesterday in day two of your HCS Open. Like I said, I'm why not be reckless. I got my man Bejesus with me. Tell the people at home a little something about yourself. Yeah, guys, I'm Bejesus. I've been playing for, I mean, I played all three seasons of Halo Infinite. Just joined up with uh, the boys on Passion United this last weekend. Um, had a really good run. Hoping to keep that up going into, into, into Atlanta. Love that, love that. And... Uh, uh obviously you you you've been competing for a little while now which i just found out was a lot of while why don't you talk to me a little bit about your competitive journey and even even go way back to where it started and how we've gotten here today oh for sure dude yeah, i think a lot of people that are newer to the halo scene probably aren't familiar with me but i have a lot of a lot of old heads a lot of old friends um i went to events way back in halo 3 mlg i'm a little bit older now and that's where I started. Still a kid, but I went to a bunch of events between 2008, um, starting at like the Columbus event that year, uh, all the way through the DC Combine. If anybody remembers MLG Combines, um, 2010, 2011, right when Reach came out and stuff like that. Uh, competed in a bunch of events. Uh, obviously, I was a kid. I didn't do super great. Stayed in the open bracket the entire time, but I competed back then. Um, and that is where... Uh, the competitive fuel for what I've done for the rest of my life has, has really come from. Um, I stopped playing Halo after Reach before the No Bloom, No Sprint patch came out. I uh, wasn't really too big into the Bloom DMR, so uh, I moved on, moved to Seattle out of where I was at um, from Maryland originally. And I lived in Seattle, worked, went to school, played soccer in college, and uh, didn't really compete in anything, but stayed in competitive gaming. Kept up with like League of Legends when it got big and things like that, but never really reached any sort of uh, top amateur pro scene and anything, just because I wasn't really pursuing it. And then in around, what was it, 2017, 2018, um, there was the Halo Online, if anybody remembers this, the Halo Online mod for Halo 3. It was a PC mod that people could play, and I played that a bunch just on the side with a bunch of people who uh, were still in the competitive Halo scene, and they just wanted to play a little bit of Halo 3. That was back when MCC was still a little busted, and they needed to come out with some more patches to fix it. And uh, I met up with three guys who uh, I became really close with. One of the guys I played with a long time ago in Halo 3, and we like reconnected through that Jello. And two of the other guys I met through there, we moved on from that in 2018 to playing Splitgate when it was in its alpha beta stage, and we played a shit ton of it. Um, and during that phase between 2017 and 2019, uh, we, we dominated Splitgate uh, tournament-wise. I went to TwitchCon 2018, won the event there live. And I was blessed enough that the devs put me up for the Twitch Rivals event uh, in 2019 for Splitgate, where I got to play with some like legends of competitive gaming in Hysteria played. Uh, I got to play with him, Dyrus from League of Legends, TSM, if anybody remembers that, um, and Gordon Hayward. Uh, I think he was playing for the Hornets at the time. <laughs> if anybody knows basketball, uh, I was so lucky to play with him. He was, he was cool, and he was sick. He's disgusting in video games. Uh, so it was really cool to, to get to play with them. And we got second in the 50K, and it was extremely fun. So, um, yeah, after that, we I think we won like eight tournaments together collectively. And two of my guys just wanted to retire from competing, live their lives. You know, we were getting a little bit older, 27, 28 at the time. And so when my boys left, I was like, I don't want to pursue trying to put together another team that wasn't going to be like like them. Like playing with your boys like and, and winning and having fun and there's no problems whatsoever in any game. It's just complete harmony, having fun, winning. There's nothing like it. So I stepped away from playing Splitgate and moved on to playing MCC Halo 3 
and got back into playing competitive. Connected with Dog7, Obnoxious, uh, Han Never Solo, and we did a ton of like online events. I never got to go to a live event because I was still living in Seattle at the time. But that was all lead up to Halo Infinite where the fire was back for me wanting to play. I, I knew that I had like the skill and the mindset from coming from Splitgate and then playing MCC online again and playing Halo 3 and how I developed just as a person. So uh, when Halo Infinite came out, I was like, yeah, man, let's make this run. Let's, let's get at it. I'm going to go back to competing again. I love that. Uh, there, there's a lot to unpack there. So I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to, I'm going to rewind a little bit and kind of address mm -hmm. and, and kind of maybe have you elaborate on some, uh, on some of the things that you went over. Like, first of all, going all the way back to 2008, if you don't mind me asking, how old were you back then when you, when you, we first started competing and going to these events? My first event, I was like, I think I just turned 14. Wow. Yeah, so <laughs> it was young. It was young, but it was so much fun, man. Like, if anybody had ever gone to any of those MLG events, like, you knew why it was so popular. And those events were, I don't know, I, I guess I was really lucky to grow up in the era of MLG and seeing the esports boom in North America. Because at the time, really, it was still like Europe that dominated professional esports. You're looking at like, but prior to that, Halo 2, you're looking at like Quake and like Counter-Strike. And that's all dominated by Europe. And I think MLG did such a wonderful job with North America, um, putting them on the map, getting them games that they could play, people that in North America played and were really good at. Uh, but yeah, at 14, it was, there's nothing like it, man. Going to one of those events when you're that young and just seeing all that passion in that entire like convention center every single time it was so fun i mean what was it like you know trying to compete at that young of, of an age like um you know did you have to argue with your parents to try to go to these events and what did that to take you there like was it hard to get on the team was it kind of like a barrier of entry like what what was it like competing at such a young age oh man uh no i didn't have to argue um <laughs> I was really lucky. I was really blessed. Um, I don't really come from a super wealthy family, but my mom did everything that she could when, when she could to get me to. I didn't get to go to every event, but the ones that were close by, and there were a ton of East Coast events at the time. Uh, I, I had friends. I went to local lands in Virginia and Maryland. Um, I connected through people on the MLG forums. Anybody remembers those back in the day? <laughs> uh, there was a large community, like just a vast community of competitive players and the scene together on the MLG forums, and you just connect with local players. I went to local lands. I connected with a lot of people in um, Northern Virginia and like Central Virginia, since I was really close by in proximity. And uh, yeah, we, I would just team with people in that area and we would go to events. And luckily enough, like the people in Northern and Central Virginia were still like really good competitive players. And so I was able to just find myself in that sphere, in that circle and play with those guys. And we would drive to events. I remember being like 16 and going to like a 2009, 2010 event or something. And we drove down to Raleigh. I drove to Columbus, um, went to Orlando one of those years as well. So um, I just got lucky. My, like very, very lucky that my mom was very supportive and she still is to this day uh, as far as like playing games competitively and stuff goes. I mean, now I can handle and fend for myself when it comes to financing all this stuff. So uh, she doesn't have to bear that burden anymore, but uh, she was very supportive. So I was lucky. That's awesome. Uh, so um, just to kind of, you know, build off of that just a little bit, you know, going into, uh, I, I believe, 2010 Combine that you, that you mentioned, that was our Reach Combine, I believe, correct? It was the, so the pro bracket for that, I believe, was still playing Halo 3, mm -hmm. and the Combine itself was the first taste of Halo Reach, yeah. So, uh, you know, you've you now, you know, got a bit of experience under your belt. Like I said, you've been going to local lands, but, uh, you know, went to a few events here. Now we're going into a new game, new opportunity. The pros are on, uh, you know, still doing the, the championship and uh, are doing their worlds, uh, you know, as an equivalent of what we have now, their biggest tournament. You know, mm -hmm. uh, what going into a new game, new opportunity. How, how, how confident were you going from Halo 3 to Halo Reach? And how did we do? <laughs> I think we got top 32 or something like that at the combine. Okay. Um, okay. I was never super, I was never placing extremely well, um, but I had quite a few opportunities um, to play with some really good players at that time who were up and coming. Um, I was, I was pretty close with Micklin at that time, back when he 
I think it was like 2009 when he first started going to events and 2010 when he really broke out when reach hit he became like really really good and i remember playing with him before um we never we never teamed together but we played a lot together we were in that same sphere of people and so i don't know it was really fun it, halo reach like, people had a ton of hype i mean you had three three and a half four years of just golden era halo 3 and people so much passion through all those events and then a new game comes out everybody's excited for it so being able to go and watch one of our favorite games i mean obviously being able to go watch halo 3 and then play the new game at the combine uh it was a really special event for everybody that attended and uh, i had so much fun i had so much fun unfortunately like reach just wasn't for me after playing like i believe i went to one more event after that um, and then I was just kind of like uh, out. And at that time, I graduated high school and was looking to do my own thing. And that's when I decided I was going to move. So I had just transitioned life period. Um, and I was like, all right, I'm done with this. But I, like I said, still kept playing competitive games after that. I remember correctly, actually, if it wasn't for that 2010 combine, I don't know. We, we I guess maybe we wouldn't have the likes of the Lethals. And I want to say it was team with Blaze yeah. back then. It was now going by sicker than your average now. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I want to I say they won it. And, and there was a lot of pros that were kind of walking around and watching this uh, and watching all them. And they were like, yo, this Lethal dude, watch out for him. Yo, these guys, watch out. They're the real deal. And it kind of put, you know, obviously put them, you know, on the map in the obviously very beginning of their career now, you know, according to the HGS top. 25 second best player in the world uh as far as as far as halo's concerned um yeah, wasn't it snake bite lethal blaze um, was it snake bite i don't know that's around the time that he came up as well i was trying to remember like Windy was a part of it. i was trying to remember like what that i know it was blaze i know it was blaze and lethal but i couldn't remember who the two other players were if it was snake bite, oh my gosh i missed a damn i definitely missed out on that well, i remember around then that's when a lot of people i mean you're talking like I think everybody remembers like Amish Acorns, Adrenaline, like mm -hmm. the Victoria's Secret team. Um, I think there was like Swift Kill, like Monix. Um, and th these are just some of the teams I remember from the, playing the Reach part of the Combine. But yeah, I know with Lethal and Blaze. I mean, I, I know that's when APG or maybe APG did pick up around that time as well after the Warriors squad. But yeah, this is, I mean, Reach was when those players made their stamp. I will say, I'll be honest with you, um, so I tried to compete toward the end of Halo 3, and then I tried to compete in Halo Reach, and um, I, was, I was so bad at the beginning of Halo Reach. Like, just that whole bloom <laughs> was awful. But then when, they, uh, when V7 settings came out, no bloom, no sprint came out. I know. I was actually, I was actually kind of nasty. I wish, I wish you were still playing with V Seven Seven. Maybe we could have matched up a little bit, a little. A little I was actually pretty yeah. decent, and I feel like it, I, I hated that it took Reach so long to get to the V Seven settings because once it happened, it was so good. And even, even the it was the, so much better than the original settings. Yeah, for even sure. the core of the game, they like reduced the reticle. Uh, I'm sorry, they reduced the bloom quite a bit on the reticle. So even when you played social, mm -hmm. even like out of the, like the actual like social settings were really good. But out of the box, dude, I was I was that was tough. Oh my gosh, I hated every moment it of it. <laughs> um, it was. Oh sorry. No, it was. It was. I mean, I just don't think bloom belongs in. <laughs> Like a competitive side of any game, it's such a, a random. I just remember like gunfights from like professional players was just spam and hope you get lucky on like that fifth shot. And the reticle would be so big. There was no time for like pacing where it's a little bit different now with like even the bandit. You can kind of pace your shots like at that last shot to make sure you hit the right one. Um, instead, if you're up on damage, but in, in reach with bloom, it wasn't like that at all. So I, I do remember playing it a little bit once they released that patch and it was so much better. Like then, at least competitively, it was a lot better to play. Uh, I still loved watching those events too. Those, those players were insane. You mentioned competing in soccer, um, you know, in mm -hmm. college, and yep. um, you know, someone like myself. Obviously, I, I competed at a very low level, but I always talked about the fact that I love the fact that I competed in uh, in basketball throughout my entire life, and I felt like a lot of like the skill set translated over from you know high school and i wanted to i wanted to play basketball in college didn't end up happening um but into into when i was trying to compete i i learned how to take a loss like i learned how to give it your all and not succeed and, and i learned how to take a loss i learned you know how to be a part of a team i learned so many skills that i felt like translated from basketball to uh to halo or to competitive esports was there anything for you that translated from your time competing in soccer 
to you know eventually compete in split game which i'm gonna ask you about and now halo yeah uh mentality mentality is a big thing uh it wasn't like a division one college or anything i think we're like a, a d3 division uh but still it had i mean training regiments uh practice uh games and in such a and i think that it's very similar um in basketball and soccer i mean all these sports are, are really similar when it comes to playing with a team you you need to care about who you're playing with. You need to play for your teammate. In, in soccer, when it comes to tactics and stuff like that, uh, you can't just do it all on your own. Maybe in basketball, it's a little bit different once you, if you're LeBron, but like you can't do it all on your own <laughs> at all on the soccer field. You need to rely on your teammates. You need to know what they're doing. You need to be able to know and expect uh, how they're going to be playing. But that comes down to like practice. And mentality-wise, losing a game, uh, performing bad in practice, uh, it doesn't matter once you get onto the pitch and you're, you're, you're playing together and, and performing there. So transitioning into competitive gaming and from playing it before, I think the one, one of the things that I evolved at as a person, pro like that maybe I didn't have as a young player, was how to practice, how to take losses in that practice, how to take away stuff from those practice matches those scrims um watching film that's a big thing that uh, i didn't really do when i was younger playing competitive gaming but from doing it in sports uh you can break down so much from a different point of view other than your own on what's happening around you that will help you elevate your game and so i think the mentality of you as a player it was critical and it translates almost one-to-one -to, -one to competitive gaming being able to have a strong mental and playing for your team is it's always been a thing in halo individual skill is amazing and even more so in like infinite than maybe in like halo 3 the skill expression is a little bit higher um but the teams that play together and know have a cohesive idea of what they are going to do once they get into the match are going to be successful uh, far more than the players who don't and the teams that don't. So you need to practice like how you want to play. You need to have a strong mentality and not uh, be down on yourselves and get upset when things aren't going that way. Every match is like, they're long matches. On the soccer pitch, you got, you got 90 minutes uh, to, to play a full game. In Halo, sometimes you got 30. It's a long oddball game. Uh, you got plenty of time to to make changes on the fly and, and play how you guys know you can and i i and i really do love that i feel like um a lot of uh, I, I felt the exact same way about like just like the things that i was able to translate over and include like you said the mentality and and you even mentioned uh, one thing i talk about all uh, all the time is learning how to take a loss like, i feel like a lot of gamers uh you know they they they've they never been to a, to an experience where you give it your all you want to win you want to succeed and you lose <laughs> And then you just don't know how to deal with that, <laughs> and, and and sometimes you see, yep. sometimes I see the toxic side of <laughs> of uh, some of the gamers out there. But I feel like that's one of the things that I learned uh, from basketball, uh, from basket, from regular sports, I guess, or traditional sports to esports. And I love talking about practice and and your mindset going into practice. Uh, there's an old saying, you know. The only time success comes before work is in the dictionary, you know, like if you're mm -hmm. if you're not willing to put in that work, if you're not willing to grind that film, which is not the most fun thing to do. And honestly, I, I think it takes even a little bit of a special skill set to be able to pull out of your own biases and go in and really critique yourself and really uh, and really try to find out what do we need to do in order to succeed. So um, love that you brought that up and I love to hear that some of that. Um, uh, some of the skills that we learned from traditional sports from soccer has translated over to the esports side of things. Um, speaking yeah, of, if, oh, sorry. If you, no, go ahead. If you want to elevate yourself as a player in anything that you do, if you're playing competitive esports or like any sports, um, you need to be willing to go back and look at what you did wrong. Like you need to have the mindset that you need to be able to accept that you weren't perfect in that game because nobody ever plays a perfect Halo game. Uh, you need to be able to sit down accept that and ask yourself do i want to get better or do i want to continue playing like i think that i'm doing the best that i can you're not doing the best that you can you need to go back and watch yourself you need to go back and watch what you're doing that where you can improve as an individual whether or not you're sitting down with your team and you're watching film go back and watch yourself even in games that you win but more so in games that you lose and see what in this play did i do incorrect uh, it's not always perfect you don't always you know, know exactly what comms that player might have had when you're watching externally, but 
find what you can do better incrementally, day by day, play by play, game by game, and you will become a much better player much quicker than you just sitting and playing matchmaking every day. It's, it's pretty simple for me in that regard. Absolutely. Um, uh, I, I want to dig a little bit more into your split gate career. Um, for, but for, for those who don't, uh, don't know what split gate was, would you mind just giving a very general, uh, uh, I guess, uh, uh, definition of what split, what the game split gate is for those who maybe haven't heard of it. Yeah, it was a PC game that came out in, I think, 2018, 2019. I don't know when the official release was. That was uh, a passion project. And I, I know a lot about this game because I got to talk with the devs all the time, almost every day. They, these guys are amazing. Um, they went to Stanford. It was two guys. And they loved Halo. And they wanted to make a more traditional arena shooter compared to that time frame when uh, Battle Royales were just dominating the market, especially eSport-wise. And so it's a portal shooter. So they implemented the... Uh, portal mechanics from the game portal into an arena shooter and it was very fast paced um, I played on MNK uh, didn't play controller on that and uh, I got started on it very early uh, and I left before they made like their pro league like it was only like an, a year it was like a year later after I stopped competing in it that they made their pro league so I kind of wish that I had kept going through that but uh, I don't have any regrets too much but it was an extremely fun game and I know now that they are working on another uh, iteration of Splitgate. I don't know exactly. I haven't been tapped into what they're doing too much, but I know that they're behind the scenes. They're working very hard on something new. And in Splitgate, I mean, I, 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 I want to ask you this because I feel like when when you went to Twitch Rivals 50k tournament, incredible. Yeah. Um, you you obviously competed back in Halo Three as you talked about before, so you knew who Hysteria was. Um, huh? yeah. you know, I'm assuming maybe if you're, even if you're not like a big basketball fan, like Gordon Hayward, he's, he's, he's a fairly household name. It probably was even more so maybe back then. So what was it like getting to team with somebody who maybe you knew of, maybe even possibly like, you know, somewhat looked up to as far as, as far as competitive wise and a NBA, you know, superstar in Gordon Hayward. What was that like? A <laughs> uh, ton of fun, dude. He was really cool. Um, and we still like, I think I gamed with him like last year, actually. Um, I've kept in touch with him ever since. And it's, re it's really fun. Uh, he hops over a ton of, a ton of different games. Uh, my, I was actually more starstruck by Dyrus, actually. Um, I was a massive fan just as a casual fan of League of Legends. If anybody ever watched competitive league in the early days, uh, team solo mid TSM, Dyrus was their top laner and uh, I had a ton of respect for him as a person. Uh, when he retired, it was, it's so weird being like a fan uh, because I've never been that invested. I mean, I love sports, but I've never been so invested in, in somebody's career, almost like I was like Dyrus. He was a very uh, real person, um, showed a lot of emotions on his sleeve, but he, he was extremely fun to play with. Hysteria, uh, too like a ton of respect for him just as a halo player being able to follow like in his footsteps and be able to compete with him in another game was a ton of fun i just had a, so much fun playing with them they were all really cool dudes they were all really good at the game uh it, prior like i don't think they had really touched the game prior i think gordon hayward had played quite a bit from what i understand gordon hayward was uh went to college with one of the friends who roomed with the guys that made this game so he had somewhat of a familiarity with them and had played the game prior, but Dyrus and Hysteria hadn't. Uh, but they were good, man. They were they were really really good, and we did really well. Uh, that was also the tournament that got me blocked on Twitter by Ogre too. So um, I think it's been long enough, bro. Um, I'm apologize for teabagging so much, but you can unblock me now. <laughs> <laughs> Ogre 2, if you're out there and you're watching, come on, give him an unblock. Give, give him bad. another chance, man. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I will say, like, I'm, I'm not even going to lie, man. I, if I was in your position, you know, we're talking about Ogre 1, Ogre 2. That, you know, those are legends. You know, I, I, if, if I'm teabagging too, I ain't even going to lie to you. I'm teabagging, maybe talking a little bit of trash, but at the end of the day, you know, it's it was a lot of love. trash. <laughs> it was a lot of trash. Was it, um, what would you say? Was, yeah. it too, was it too much trash talk? Was it too much? No, no, it's not. There's never enough. There's never enough. <laughs> but it, it was fun. It was fun. I apologize. So my bad, guys. It's been long. It's been a long time. We can we can resolve this. So uh, fast forward to now we're here in Halo Infinite. And uh, and, you know. How so we stopped playing Splitgate. 
you know, we went we went to Halo mm -hmm. Three, which, by the way, you talked. About, uh, I know you said your teammates were Dog Seven and uh, Obnoxious, um, and I I I knew I know of Dog Seven now, but I had no idea of them before. Um, mm -hmm. with the whole with the MCC days, I knew of Obnoxious for a while. In fact, I actually tried to team with Obnoxious. Definitely didn't happen. He was like, "Dude, you're, you're trash." <laughs> Definitely not happen. Back in back in the uh, back, I want to say. Now, Vinny didn't say that. He didn't say that. Did he? <laughs> he, he did not. He didn't say that. But okay. uh, but I, I'm, I'm reading in between the lines. Like it was it, it wasn't the right move for him. And, I, and I'm I'm happy to go a different direction because he's obviously way better than I would have ever been. Uh, and and always has been damn good. I want to say it comes from uh uh what is i know new york maybe long island new york yeah, i'm not yeah. even sure i know he's in I, new york he's i know the new york. new york area i was trying to make like a new jersey new york team and i definitely wanted him on that on that roster because he he was nasty um Vinny's hard to team with i'll tell you that Vinny Vinny's difficult to get to go to an event he's got to feel super comfortable with who he's playing with before he like commits but Vinny is a, a known like i flake when it comes to even getting to like a little land i think that i went to rob the turtles house and for halo 3 right before halo infinite released and we were trying to get him to go and show up and it was it was like dude Vinny, come on show up you're like 20 minutes away dude <laughs> we couldn't get him to, to show up so don't feel too bad that's a Vin, that's a Vinny problem <laughs> no nah, but he's he's a, he's a damn good player he really is he um is. so hey so, so we we jump from split gate to halo 3 and mm -hmm. was there something about Halo Infinite that kind of first drew you in? Or is it just, hey, look, new Halo game, I'm about to come in, I'm older now, I'm wiser, I've been there, done that, I'm just to come in and wreck. So what, what led us into Halo Infinite competitive? Yeah, Halo, Halo was home, man. Halo's where it all, all started for me when it came to the fire and the passion for competing in, in games. So um, I played Halo 3 again, and I felt like as a person, I developed a ton. And as a player, I was performing really well. And I was like, dude, no. I've got plenty of opportunity here and, and time, and I want to go back to events. I want to get back into it. I want to see some old friends, and I want to I want to compete again and see what we can do. So uh, that that's all there there was to it. I just had a lot of passion, a lot of passion and desire to push myself even further than I was able to do before with what I had learned. So that that's where we're at. So um, you you said the words exactly. I'm gonna read them off to you. This is this is your words. I heard you say that we caused an upset. I want to get on here and set the record straight. So those are those are big uh, words. So it's absolutely. A, so so we're talking about the, we're obviously talking about the tournament play Sunday, making it into Thursday. Please, the yep. floor is yours. Go go set set me straight. <laughs> uh, we should have never gone to a game five in that series. Uh, I've never. All of us, I, I know even Maddie Powell, uh, we've never lost to that team in tournament play in this this year. Like. I don't think I've ever lost to anybody on the team except Lido, who was my teammate at Arlington, by the way. I have a ton of love for these guys, so no disrespect whatsoever, especially Lido. Um, he played his fucking ass off in that series. He was so good, uh, and I, I knew it was going to happen. But never. I've, I've knocked that team out of tournaments, I think, prior to London twice, TMNT. Uh, I don't know who their fourth was at the time. It wasn't Lido, but yeah. Uh, and Maddie and Palfius uh, put them into the ground at London. Um, I think they 250 and owed them on strongholds. I think it was like Live Fire Strongholds or something. Uh, we were going into that series fully expecting to win, and we're more upset that it even went to a game five. And not to make excuses or anything, game one's 1,000% 1, on me because I had like, it felt like I was playing on a, like, a, a regular TV. I had like a 5MS, like, or so, it was just so much input lag on my controller, and I don't know what happened. And I reset after that game, and everything was fine. Um, and we just had to lock in. Our oddball game wasn't strong, but then again, we've never practiced as a team. Uh, me and Big being picked up, like this was our first time playing together, uh, wasn't, a, wasn't a problem. Game two was the 50-49. Uh, but after like a few games, that we were, we were all on the same page. That Strongholds game that we came back in was super strong at the end, and then the Slayer at the end wasn't even close. We were so, we were so ready just to, to get past them. So yeah, it wasn't an upset. That that team, I don't know how people thought. I think you said like on paper, team and T should be winning that that game. Maybe he's just not familiar with me and Big, but he should be now. Well, I, if, and 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 I will I will apologize to y'all. I I didn't know that 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 we have never lost to that team and and that uh and it's that right. we and we knocked about. Uh, so I was mainly going by in my in my opinion, watching the first three games. Yeah, I thought TMNT looked very good. And yes, you guys mm -hmm. did win that fifty to forty nine. But if I remember correctly, I, I felt like uh, I I really did feel like TMNT had a lot of control 
and just kind of and and just kind of lost and lost track of it. So I I I I will apologize. I wasn't familiar with y'all's game, but I but I will say I di- I didn't mean any disrespect whatsoever by it. And I was mainly going by what I was seeing within those first few games, and I really felt like TMNT had it. And I swear to and and, and maybe maybe I'm wrong by this. At one point in that game four, that ki- that King of the Hill game, it looked to me like Glitchy was jumping and doing three sixties. <laughs> I swear I need to go yeah. back and watch. It looked like he was jumping to doing 360. They, they 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 had a decent size lead. Maybe not that big of a lead, but it was a decent size lead. And I'm sorry, not Keenan. I want to say with strongholds. I apologize. Maybe strongholds. But I I had to wait with the game four. And um I remember he you just got- he just slid off of nest and I think the what he was doing was looking for the guy that we had training. All right, we had a guy sitting maybe that maybe that, that was I don't know if he was doing the full 360 because <laughs> he was super confident. I don't think that was the case. I didn't get the feeling in game that they were doing anything mm-hmm. wild. I think that they were really trying. And again, no disrespect to the team because they are really good players. Um, but I think that he was looking for the guy. He probably we mm-hmm. had a guy just sitting training who I think got spawned like who spawned there and was like trying to live. Um, That's what I, said. I, I definitely could have been wrong. It, it looked it looked a little strange on our POV because I remember we just we just like flipped to him. But like I said, yeah. I, in those in those first few games, I really felt like they had I really felt like they had control. But you guys did it. You guys came back. You guys won it. And I will say, I I I, I, I love. I love the attitude to throw, to throw some respect on our names, <laughs> type, of, and the and the fact yeah. that you're not you're not even happy that it went to game five because in y'all's opinion maybe it should have been a three zero or at least a three a three one and uh, and I do love that. Um, so I, I I apologize if you guys felt like it was any disrespect. I promise it wasn't. Oh no, I, I you're not. You're, you're good. You're good. <laughs> we got we got some things to clean up with like oddball games for sure. Uh, we weren't super clean in any of our oddball games. Um, but the first time playing together, you have some things you need to iron out. And when you're doing it on the fly, uh, that's why I was so happy with playing with them. I haven't had a consistent team in Infinite, and I've been looking for a, like consistency this entire time. And getting players who have already played together in Maddie and Palpheus, and putting like a really good player on the team like Big, who who is ex- ex- individually extremely good, uh, and to be able to mentally battle through. Uh, a deficit because we were down like 200 to like 135 140 in that stronghold game and an elimination game and come back like that and win 250 to 200 and be strong and talking through things in the middle of the match and just and it, like innately understanding and trusting who's making that play call it was very fluid and it felt really good uh it made me very very happy as a player to be able to to get through that match and through that series the way that we did well, I love the fact that you guys were able to do that, but uh, obviously hard work to make it out of that Sunday and make it to Thursday. But we're going to fast forward a bit. Again, like I said, we'll, we'll talk about the bracket uh, in yeah. part two of the video. Um, but one thing I did want to bring up is that going into Thursday's matchup, uh, um, round one, we see that there was a forfeit, uh, and that still decided we're awarded the win to move forward. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, what, what happened? Were we not able to make it? Two of the guys had to had to work. That's it. Um, that, that's all there was. And I think it was the same thing with Stop the Glaze as well. Unfortunately, I think it was Maddie and Big had both had work obligations, which you know it happens. We're, we're not getting we're not getting salaries at all from from playing out of open bracket. So you have to do what you have to do. You know. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel like this. There's been times I've had to miss tournaments as well because I, I do work. I do work. I work part time now, but in certain tournaments, I'm like yeah. I've been asked to cast, and I'm like. <laughs> I got to work <laughs> and whatnot. Yeah. And, uh, um, yeah. so if, if we, if we did have this, ma- uh, this matchup and say, you know, say this was done on Thursday after maybe 6 PM, for example, maybe that we were able to, uh, uh, make it out. How did you, how would you have felt about your chances to get the team like still deciding? It would have been tough. It definitely would have been a tough series. Uh, they're not a bad team whatsoever, but they were certainly a team that was a pickup team. And I, I personally have no fear going into any game at all. I'm more worried about what we're doing and making sure that we're playing our game. And then going into a game like that, I treat it like it's going to be really good practice for us. If we were able to play that match, I wanted to make sure that we went in with a game plan and then we try to execute that game plan, whether or not it worked. Uh, we can go back afterwards and say why this may not have wanted to work and, or why it may not have worked and what we can do different next time. Did we? 
execute on what we wanted to do? Did we try to execute it uh, or did we go rogue? Like, what can we fix? That's what I was looking for in going into that match. It would have been a very tough series, but I absolutely felt like we could have taken games off of them. Um, look, I mean, looking at that lower bracket, there was, God, what, six game fives between all, like, all of these teams? Uh, oh my I, gosh. I, I wouldn't ha have had any preference in playing any of the teams that we would have been matched up with at all. It, it wouldn't have mattered to me. I would have been thinking the same way that since we didn't have any scrims prior to that tournament, uh, we need to get reps in as much as possible against good teams. And that's, that's what I wanted. Well, you said you, um, you said, it's <clears throat> sorry, alert no, no, came to, um, you said it's, it's, you know, you haven't been able to, uh, to get the opportunity on, you know, uh, a, a a a good team like Pat like like Pass United before, and I will I will say, if there's one thing that I've known, I, there we go. If if there's one thing that I have known about this roster, number one, they stick together. They put in the work. Yep. Like Maddie is legitimately one of the nicest guys that I've met, so I'm always rooting for him. I don't know too much of Palfius besides that I've seen him teaming with Maddie, you know, and this past United roster for a little while now. And I've seen Bigger Baloo just like on Twitter. I've seen him on Twitch streams. I've, I've, I've never watched his POV, but I've been seeing him a, a little bit of whatnot. And I will say one thing that this roster does seem like they have guys seem like they have vibes. I seem like you have a really great head on your shoulders. And if and from what I've noticed from the past is that y'all willing to stay together, y'all willing to put in the work. So I, I am excited to see what you guys have going forward. Because this was if this was your one of your first tournaments, if not your first tournament together, and you made it into a day two, you guys did some big things. Like I can only imagine the future must be bright for you guys with Passion United. Yeah, we um, unfortunately we know for a fact that we won't be able to play with Big at Atlanta because he's in the I think he's in the army. He played with the United States like Army esports mm -hmm. team for a long time. Uh, so we know for a fact that we won't have Big going into Atlanta. We're gonna play with him for one more week to make sure that he like maintains some points, uh, and before we can like find a fourth and. Um, I, I'm fairly, I'm like not 100% certain. I've talked to Maddie and Palfius about going into Atlanta and after this last Sunday, um, I'm not like officially on Passion United or anything. It's really up to Maddie and Palfius. They're, they're going to be the ones that are still on the team. And uh, we, I have a very good feeling about us playing together and considering how we did. Uh, I, I would really, really love to continue playing with them. And I think that that's the way that it's going, but we'll see what happens. Uh, and I, I still feel strongly no matter what, like, I, I'm really sad that we won't get the opportunity to play with Big because he really does deserve to have a team that can compete uh, and go far because individually he is extremely strong. He's just a player that's, I think, a little bit newer to uh, higher tier competitive and needs a team that can help him uh, compete with that. And I think that if we had this four going into Atlanta, uh, I would feel so confident going into that land and being able to continue to push the way that we've been pushing. Fantastic. Well, that's going to conclude part one of the RHS report. We already did an interview, which you probably watched just before now. And now we're going into a bit of a bracket breakdown. We're going to break down everything that happened within day two of the HGS Open Series. Sadly, we do know that Pass United did make it to day two, but weren't able to compete due to work obligations. So um, would have been exciting to see that. But you were a part of that roster. You did put in the work over towards uh, uh, over towards Sunday to make it into Thursdays. Why don't you talk to me real quick about Sunday's tournament, Sunday's matchup, real quick before we actually go into the bracket breakdown? Yeah, we had a we had a really good run. We I think we ran into complexity in the winners bracket, and we lost that match. And then to the losers, um, I'm, we didn't really run into any resistance until that last match to get into into bracket play. I uh, ended up winning that in a game five against TMNT, uh, Valkyrie Lido, Zoom, and I forgot the fourth there, but uh, it was a good series. The last two matches, yeah, Glitchy, the last two matches, we were uh, full steam ahead. So uh, it felt super good. We were really confident and felt really, really, really good after winning that series to finally make it to a top 12 finish. Well, I want to thank you again for sitting down with me and actually, and actually doing this. It's actually the first time that we've gotten the chance to sit down and just talk. And so far, it's been great. Obviously, you're well articulate, uh, clearly uh, well educated, and uh, an absolute menace on the sticks. Uh, so <laughs> thank you. Thank you. I want to thank you again for, for sitting down with us here. And while we go into the actual bracket breakdown, um, 
We're going to talk a little bit about round number one. Sentinels with a 3-0 over still decided. Knock a Demons Elimination Bracket. Bittersweet, 3-1 over Incognito. Cloud9, 3-2 over Versal Perfy. And Pure with a dominant 3-0 over Complexity. With these four batches that we see, is there anything that just stands out to you? The floor is yours. Um, yeah, the Cloud9 Reversal Perfy. Uh, I think that's going to be a theme even through the, the Elimination Bracket. Uh, Cloud9 is not a bad team whatsoever. They're they're really, really, really good. I think that they don't perform as well online as they do going into into land, but they have shown, I think, over the last like two months that even online and on land that they are a very formidable team. And Reversal Perfy, it's the Common Haynes breaking shot uh, team that they put them to the test, put them to the sword in that game and in that series. It was very fun to watch that one, and watching those guys gel together is extremely fun. I mean, that's a fun team to watch, Reversal Perfy, uh, that is. And I'm more surprised that it went to a game five, but also not surprised. I think that in this entire tournament, Cloud9 was very like hot or cold, depending on the series, so I was more surprised to see that. Uh, other than that, Bittersweet is a team that I... I wasn't not expecting them to win that series at all. Like I was expecting them to win them just based off like looking at the rosters. I think Incognito is that uh it's like that mashup was that that mashup roster of like native playing with like Descendant mm -hmm. and yep. like, King Nick and stuff like that. Um and I, I'm not I'm not surprised by that, really. Uh, I think that individually that inc incognito roster is just as capable as bittersweet is like on the map but uh bittersweet i think are very 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 hungry players and with incognito bringing back king nick who hasn't played in a, in a while now uh, and maybe not practiced at all i'm not too surprised by that at all and in round one it was more to me that reversal perfy was able to take cloud nine to a game five you know, once, the, once this Cloud9 roster was put together, like, I, I was a big believer in them. I know a lot of people uh, yeah. maybe said I was over-believing in them. But they said I was a little bit faded. But um, the first tournament, I remember the first tournament that I can remember them together, they upset Optic, Optic in the winner's bracket in one of the HS Open tournaments. And I was like, mm -hmm. y'all paying attention now. But I will say Reversal Perfy have been upsetting left and right and uh, yep. definitely have a bright future ahead of them. Uh, I, you said you weren't surprised with Bittersweet over Incognito. I, I, I actually was surprised, to be honest with you. I thought maybe uh, Incognito uh, might have been the favorites, even though not you know a full roster. Like you said, you, you did have APG that was uh, still overseas and enjoying his vacation. Obviously, yep. um, Mickwin was just dropped, uh, and Tapping Buns wasn't exactly on the roster yet. They're, they're, yep. uh, it wasn't a full roster, but I still thought they were very capable. Um, but Bittersweet, yeah. very good have been very good for a while. They come up with the 3-1 in order to play Sentinels. Cloud9 move forward in order to play Pure, which is that um, they were formerly going as Proton Gaming. They drop Collect, bring in Cherished uh, to come in, and they 3-1 Cloud9. Meanwhile, Sentinels, Rio Bittersweet. Yeah, I mean, I think both series were to be expected. Uh, obviously, eyes on pure, seeing how Cherish is going to fit into that team because those three players, uh, Talek, Last Shot, Druk, we all know that they play extremely fast. That is their pace of game. Uh, they've always been like that since they were KCP. And finding that right, like, fourth. I mean, I, I, Soul Snipe was... They were such a strong roster, and I think it's so sad that we never got to see them again after that Worlds and in, in Infinite and see if they can continue to play. Druck losing out on that, that year of in, you know, NNA playing. Really sad to not be able to see that, but I think that Cherish is going to fit very well on that roster. I am a little bit surprised by Collect being dropped because I think that he was very similar, and I have no insight whatsoever onto what was happening after that tournament or at london and whether or not they just felt like it wasn't a good fit or if they just felt like they were getting somebody who was much more aligned to how they want to play with cherish uh Klex obviously extremely skilled so uh people making a choice on whether or not they think cherished or collect is better is just it shouldn't even be an argument they're they're both extremely good players so i think at this level these players who know that they want to play together those three core players finding somebody who fits them perfectly is much uh it's much better for them long term and so I wasn't too, you know, I was expecting them to win that series. And those are my boys too. So I always root for them. And Sentinels over Bittersweet. Uh, Sentinels has just been so strong since making that switch to Precision, man. Uh, he's so good. And hopefully now with Lethal, if you saw that, he doesn't have to play in his office anymore for these <laughs> tournaments. He can play at home. So uh, online events should mirror a little bit better for their land placings and he can get much better practice. 
uh, from the comfort of his home. So uh, with Sentinels 3-0 in bittersweet, not too surprised by that what, uh, whatsoever. So I think that those two series went about how most people expected. Obviously, pure Cloud9, I think that they went back and forth even in the elimination bracket, right? Like they were... Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that those two teams putting each other to the test was actually really fun to watch. Yeah, I feel like Sensibles came into this uh this tournament as the favorites to win it. Um I I like I like Cloud9 a lot, but I, I've always said I didn't I didn't like Cloud9 versus Sentinels. I felt like maybe Pure could pull off an upset here and beats mm-hmm. and, and beat Sentinels to win it, but it really felt like Sentinels tournament to lose. Uh and they really kind of controlled their own destiny where another side of things you mentioned uh, uh you mentioned the whole cherished pickup. Um dro- uh, drop it, uh, drop it collect, I definitely question that. But I will say Cherish is getting a huge opportunity on this team. And yeah. watching his gameplay yesterday, dude was flying. Like, oh yeah. my gosh. Not only does he fit the role really well of what Pure trying to accomplish on the map, but like it feels like he's really been activated. Like he it feels like he's even taken a step forward because he just he feels more comfortable now. And uh, it was it was really good to watch how good Cherish was playing because I felt like, wow, this is this is the potential that we've seen. He's always been good uh, and o- o- always felt like he's definitely like been on the tier of like, you know, being great. But on this roster with this opportunity, dude, he's he, the spotlight on him. He really stepped up. And I thought. Uh, I I thought beating Cloud Nine was 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 really good for Pure. Uh, Jagged Cloud was in the chat talking about um, that that Cloud. There's no way Cloud Nine even get a game off of them. Uh, even, even Uzi had Uzi on before, and he said there's gonna be a three zero favorite Pure. I'm like, yo, we just disrespecting Cloud Nine like that. So uh, I th- I thought it was a I thought it was a good win for Pure to come out with the three one. And like you said, we're gonna talk more about this matchup because they did duke it out once again the lower bracket, and yeah. uh, maybe history didn't repeat itself. Uh, going into the winner's bracket finals, guaranteed top three no matter what happens, but more importantly, a win gets you into the grand finals with that um, with that advantage of only having to win one best of five series instead of winning two, and it was Sentinels that come out with the three win over Pure to make it into the grand finals. Yeah, they didn't look bad either, Pure, meaning Pure. They didn't look bad against Sentinels uh, during that series. Sentinels is just, uh, I think, more practiced for sure. Uh, than Pure, and that kind of showed in that series. There were times and paces during that game where Pure was like on their on their move. But a team as fast paced as Pure needs to be practiced to have consistency in their series. And uh, Sentinels has just—I mean—they've leveled up since adding Precision to that roster. It feels like a ton. And with them gelling, it's they're they're a very strong roster man they're a very strong roster and i think that sentinels needs to be in consideration the rest of the year if they keep this roster for a top four finishes and putting the big three big four however you want to put it to the test those those series are always going to be fun to watch uh they're they're a very good roster so um I again, pure fan. I would have loved to see them take more games off of Sentinels there and play a little bit better, but they just need this is really good practice for them. Really good practice. And I, I know that they're going to be scrimming more and more often. So I expect uh, next week, the week after, if this matchup happens again, that we're going to be looking at different results than the 3 1. Love that. And, uh, and I will say, you know, just, just like we talked about, you know, pure dropping, collecting, going with Cherished, uh, when Sentinels first dropped Sparty, uh, I, I I was I was shocked. Uh, I felt like uh, I felt like if you took Arlington out of the equation, Sentinels were on a very upward trajectory. And we, yeah. in fact, I remember being on the desk and, and West uh, talked about the fact that you know maybe we maybe we stop talking about a big three and maybe we start talking about a big four with the way the Sentinels uh, were playing going into the HS Open Series the online uh, cups leading up into Arlington. Obviously, Arlington. Did not go their way, uh, but then it seemingly kind of bounced back. The online tournament uh, uh, results were back to being very good. It felt like they quickly bounced back, but um, obviously, obviously, I feel like it was a little bit more than just um, um, just skill wise or results uh, yeah. results wise. Like there was, I feel like there was more to this uh, them deciding to go a different direction and bringing on precision. That was one thing I didn't question. We've been talking about precision no. for a very long time. Uh, I feel like I, I was talking about like late season one when he was in the open brackets, uh, going into season two. And then if there's a few players out there that I'm like, 
dude, going from the BR to the Bandit, like, even helped them even more. And I feel like Precision is one of those players. The way he navigates the map, like, moving from cover to cover, it's almost Gears of War S. Like, he plays an environment so well. And that whole, and the jiggle peeking is very strong right now. And Precision's nasty at it. Like, I, and I feel like, to me, yeah. I'm like, I wonder if it's that Gears of War background that influences the way that he moves and influences the the, the strength of his jiggle peeking. Uh, and, and I think a single shot weapon definitely works out so well for him. And he's he was already great, now doing even better since the, the switch off of the BR to the Bandit. <laughs> Yeah, I think I played him almost every open bracket in year one on that Shopify Rebellion team that was like him, Mental, and like the Gears players. Uh, and it pissed me off so bad. They were so good and they were so coordinated. They were just learning infinite. And I think that I got knocked out like four or five times in Loser's Bracket by that exact roster. And it seemed like every single time I matched up against them, I was like, God, God damn it, man. It's, it's always going to be this team again, huh? They just have my number. Uh, but even then, you could tell, even in the BR starts, like that team had insane individual skill and it did not take them long. Him and Mental both on picking up the any professional that is so good to the point where they're winning 25 plus tournaments and they're they're that good in one esport is going to have the right mentality going into another esport another shooter and and being able to spend some time picking it up learning it and you know putting what they know on how to win into that game so i'm not surprised whatsoever both those players are insane insane players and it's so fun to watch him and mental finally like have a ton of success and they deserve that for sure well, we did, at this point, we knew who was making it to the Grand Finals. It was obviously sense of they came in as the favorites, and they were the favorites to win the tournament. Now it's time to find out, you know, if Pure were going to be able to get back into the Grand Finals to maybe get their revenge, or if things were going to go a little bit different. Scrolling down to the lower bracket, we, uh, we'll, talk, we'll talk quickly about the match that actually did happen. Complexity over Scion Esports, that was a 3-0. Mm -hmm. Incognito with a 3-0 over Send Baseline. Um... I was hoping Scion took some games off complexity. That team um, certainly has the capability of taking games off from complexity. That that roster of complexity. Yeah, I got, I got to say that with Uzi, and I, and I and I told him I said it's it's winnable. It, it doesn't mean that it's probable. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen. But it was winnable for them, and I would love to see them take a couple of games. I, I I think I think they were saying they had a bit of audio issues. They weren't making making an excuse, but I believe they had a bit yeah. of audio issues in Discord where uh, something. Uh, I think it crashed on one or two of their ends, which I can imagine could be devastating going into any one of these matches. Always Maybe sucks. could have been the difference of winning a game or or two there. But uh, uh, that that's terrible and uh ascend baseline as i think i think as as those said he felt uh he felt a little confident i remember he was in the chat and saying that maybe maybe they can come out with the win obviously you know not the favorites in that matchup in incognito damn good um mm -hmm. incognito coming with the 3-0 on uh on that end as well yeah they could have taken two games i think that all of these series like even stop the glaze reversal perfy like if they were able to to play that series, that's leader in his complexion, Squilly, and gosh, I forgot the fourth there already. Uh, I think all these series in that round eight, they could have not have been three O's. Like these these games could have been extremely fun to watch for teams that are super hungry and I think pretty close in, in skill. Like Ascend Baseline definitely could have taken games off of Incognito. I didn't get to watch those, so I don't know how close the games were. Um, if you knew off the top of your head, but I, I definitely felt like they were strong enough to do that too. I didn't get to see these matches. I didn't start casting till about here, and I feel like uh, uh, I got to watch right here in Elimination Quarters. To be honest with you, Elimination okay. Quarters when I when I actually got in. Um, uh, Reversal Perfy though, three one over Complexity, and little did I know that this matchup was. Well, in fact, I, was, I watched this matchup. I remember literally right afterwards. That's when McWin tweeted out that yep. um, he was decided to retire. And then I talked about this in a video I recorded earlier. The verbiage that he used, I felt like was not indicative of of the player that I've seen in 2024. Like he said he's been, you know, kind of kicking the can. He used the word embarrassing himself. And I've not, I, I mean, obviously they haven't found the success that they wanted, but I've not felt anywhere near that. I felt like he was just really hard on himself on that tweet. But um, uh, still that's the type of player he is man like he's always been that way and when you when you're a player who has has as much success as he has in what he's done and you are limited because he didn't play year one he was on that i think the halo like pro team the hcs pro team so he was limited because during development he was assisting with them putting together hcs stuff 
uh, for him to come back and have that drive and not be able to achieve what he probably thinks that he what level he should be at uh, can be very frustrating and can take a toll like mentally on somebody, especially for somebody who's been in the game for as, as long as he has. I understand it. Uh, and I, I love that everybody was so supportive of him because it's been so fun for so long to watch him play and succeed. Uh, and he's such a good dude that he deserves that love. Uh, but those types of players are going to be hard on themselves. And you have to be if you want to be at the top. You have to be very hard and tough on yourself when it comes to uh, playing the best players all the time, every single week. And so I, I'm not too surprised, but uh, man, what a, what a career for, for him. It's been over the course of many different titles. It's so, he's such a good player, man. It'll be sad to see him go. He really is, but uh, it was Reversal Perfect. It came out with the 3-1 uh, win in this uh, series to move forward. Uh, mm -hmm. On the bottom half, you have Incognito and still deciding, and this is where every game just simply went to game five afterwards. It was right down here, yep. and Incognito started to go off with a with a big win against a still deciding roster. Both teams kind of a little bit of pickup uh, teams, but both teams having tons of talent on there. Yeah, tons, man. I was actually expecting still deciding to win that series, so I didn't even really question that too much. I was like, oh, they should probably they should probably win this, but I don't know if that still deciding roster is going to stay together. Don't uh, who, who else was on that incognito team? So you what had full roster. Uh, you had Gilkey and oh, think what do you think, Eric? Uh, Gilkey barcode. Gilkey barcode. Then they bring on uh, Descendant, and yep. the fourth was King Nick. Sorry. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a strong team, man. Individually, that's a super strong team. Whatever, despite what people might think about King Nick, he's a very good individual player as well. And he he was on that Cloud9 roster for a while. Like, after his... I feel like people were really harsh on him after year one. Really harsh on him for no reason. And uh, ever since then, every time I watch him, I'm like, this dude just shoots straight every single time, man. He does so much damage. He's a very strong player, so... Um, I, I think individually I was expecting still deciding to be able to maybe outmatch and outpace Incognito, but man, it's hard. It's hard sometimes with these pickup teams on seeing who's going to be the better team that day and going to a game five. I mean, after that reversal, perfect complexity game, you guys got, you guys got treated well <laughs> casting wise. You guys got all <laughs> those game fives. So I bet you that was super exciting. Uh, very fun to watch. We really did. And I feel like um, there was, there was, I remember back in, I want to say season two where uh, it was King Nick. It was on complexity. I want to say and and uh, just had a, had a had a pretty bad series and it was brought up on the desk and I, I think it was maybe it might have been West that was you know he was a little harsh on him. West uh, West he don't pull punches. Uh, yeah. And I want to say maybe that kind of stuck in a lot of people's minds that series and um and uh, and. And like you said, people were a little bit hard on him. I will say that uh, I've known him for quite some time. This man, uh, it was him and uh, Scary Yotic that knocked me out of a, out of the Microsoft <laughs> tournament uh, <laughs> uh, back in Halo 5. We got second place, and we lost to him and Scary Yotic. And then, like, there was a, a few games where I matched up against him. I'm, I'm not normally at your guys' rank. I was just playing with uh, someone who's a higher rank, kind of pulled me up a little bit. And I matched with King Nick a couple, uh, a couple of times, and literally back-to-back, -back, he dropped 40 bucks. And I, I, I don't know if I went into his chat to say good games. He came into my chat, but he was like, bro, the bandits here, I'm back. And I'm like, dude, you are because you're frying right now. Man. It was actually crazy. Um, but no, nah, I'm, I'm happy. I, I, I want to see good things. I want to see big things out of King Nick. Um, I think he's going to be a highly sought after free agent. I thought there was a good chance that he wouldn't be with Complexity when they played together during that Forge tournament. But obviously Complexity, mm -hmm. uh, uh, complexity going a bit of a different direction with Mick win. Where did he go from here? I'm not exactly sure. Um, this is where my bracket got screwed. I'm going to blame you guys in the chat because I had Reversal Perfy. My bracket was perfect up until here. And I had Reversal Perfy winning this matchup, but my chat said I was crazy and made me go bittersweet. Not a single person had Reversal Perfy with me. And I listened to y'all and I blame y'all. My bracket was perfect up until here, but Reversal Perfy with a big it's 3 Super two. CC. That's the, that's the fourth on that, right? It was Super yes. CC? Mm hmm yeah yeah uh maybe people weren't trusting that cc not being out like he didn't really compete in the last couple opens and i don't know if he's he didn't go to london or the event prior arlington uh but he's a super strong individual player man and bittersweet's a, a roster that's just being put together those are all of these teams that are just thrown together and trying to figure out who they want the team with and are swapping players back and forth uh 
these series can go almost any way, but when you have a team like Reversal Perfy who uh, has a core three who have stuck together and know each other so well, you, you have to lean on that consistency when it comes to trying to predict it, man. I, I felt the same way. I felt like Reversal Perfy should be winning that series and uh, going to a game five, another treat, man. But I, I was super glad to see CC come back and play and play the way that he did. He looked really good, and I hope he finds a really good home on that roster or, or somewhere else, man. It's always fun to watch him play. If I remember correctly, I believe he even announced on Twitter that he was going to uh, that he was going to retire from four v four competitive. Like he still wanted to play in free for all. Still wanted to even do maybe a bit of content creation. I know he's doing for a while, uh, mm -hmm. but it looks like you know once you get that itch, you gotta hop right. You gotta scratch it. They gotta hop right back in. And uh, like yeah, you said, man. he fit in very well with Versal Perv. I think he played absolutely incredible, and the whole team was definitely gelling on this entire tournament. Yep. Um, Cloud9 against Incognito, another game five, and uh, Cloud9 coming out with the win on this one. Incognito, like kind of mentioned, you know, a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of free agent, well, I guess two free agents and uh, half of Native Gaming coming together. They want to make sure to get their points. They played really well, uh, but it was Cloud9, yep. and maybe their, maybe their practice, they came in well prepared in this matchup, and maybe that's the reason why they came out with the 3-2 win. Yeah, I think maybe getting to play against Pure, because that's where they dropped out from, um, that 3-1 series against Pure, uh, kind of sharpened them up a little bit, because from there on out, they made it to the elimination finals. Uh, but it was, it was all 3-2 series. So uh, it, maybe it's just a little bit of the experience, again, coming through with Cloud9, them play, being able to play together for so long now and having that experience and a little bit of mental toughness, just knowing what they're doing when they're in a very tight match and being able to trust each other. Uh, those split second decisions and th those very small things make a huge difference when it comes to winning and losing games. So uh, that's where I would probably put the edge at between those two teams. I'm more surprised that I went to a, a game five though. Like getting cocked into looked really good, but Cloud9 looked uh, really, really good. And I think that what I said earlier about them being hot or cold showed during all of these series, like it seems like one match, one game, they're on fire, they're clicking, they're playing well, and then they lose some of that traction in the other games, and they were just back and forth. Like there was, it was a roller coaster watching them play the entire, uh, the entire bracket. But they're a strong team, man. Cloud Nine's really good, really, really, really good, and I'm excited to see if maybe we this upcoming week or during the major qualifier we get even uh, more of the pro teams playing in these, uh, seeing how well they can do. And we see we see Cloud9 move forward and get a 3-2 win over, over Versal Perfy. And uh, and one thing that stood out to me when watching Cloud9 during these two matches was just the way that they played Slayer. Um, mm -hmm. And obviously being the deciding factor of both of the series. When we t when a lot of times it's us as like analysts and and maybe you have a different perspective, you know, we talk about you know the way Pure is able to uh, control the pace of the game by being very aggressive. You know, we talk about the way Sentinels are able to control the pace by being more of like a slower defensive team, but both teams able to control the pace that uh control the pace of the game their own way. Cloud and I were very unique, but they had like a nice little balance of speed. And like the offense and defense, like in, uh, I think of the Slayers on Live Fire and Streets, and they would get an early lead. They had great starts, like just great starting strats that led to wins, mm -hmm. and or led to winning the starting strat. They would get the early lead, and then they would just like stop on a dime and like full defensive setup, slow down, dare the other team to make a mistake and push them. And then once they identified where the enemy team was coming from. They got aggressive, and then they pounced, won that engagement, and then it was back to, all right, slow it down. Dare didn't even see the push forward. It was very interesting to see them go from, like, all right, we're going to be super aggressive at this moment, boom, 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 and then, like, almost stop on a dime and get into, like, a defensive stance. We saw that both on Live Fire and Streets, and it worked out for them in back-to-back -back series. Yeah, it's almost like zone defense in the NFL. Like, you, like once you have control, you are looking for their spawns and where are they going? And most of these pro teams are going to be hitting uh, a lane together or splitting. Like if you're talking about live fire, there's three main lanes, right? Top, mid, bottom, mid, you know, green and uh, overshield camo side, right? There's three main lanes. And as a, a pro team, most of the time you're going to be sitting most, you're going to be seeing most of those players hitting two of those lanes or the same lane at the same time. You're going to be seeing them splitting the map in half. That's just a recipe for disaster most of the time. And so cloud nine watching them can, get control go for dead control their spawns most of the time that's what i'm seeing them doing is blocking spawns and forcing them into one side of the map and then letting them make their move and getting eyes on them and knowing what route they're hitting and then just collapsing on it which is i mean it's a smart way to play it's a, it's a strong way to play so it definitely worked out for them 
Oh, thank, thank you so much for uh, for giving us that insight. As, as obviously, I've I've never competed anywhere near your level, especially not on Halo Infinite. So, love the fact that we we're able to get a little bit of insight from a competitor's point of view. And uh, yeah. uh, so, th thank you very much. I want to uh, advance forward into the <laughs> another another game five. And uh, and uh, and <laughs> I, I'm talking to you, Jack Cloud, when I say this again. You said that there's no way Cloud and I win a game. Not only they win the game in the winners bracket, but going into the elimination bracket finals, they won more than one. They were awarded two. They actually won the series in a three-two versus Pure in on their way mm -hmm. to the grand finals, leading up to a Cloud Nine and Sentinels matchup. Yeah, man, I'm su surprised by that. I, I think most teams or most players were expecting Pure to be the team that's going to be winning that and get into the Grand Finals versus Sentinels just based off of history. But like I said, Cloud9, all day long, hot and cold, and they, they, found, they found their footing when they really needed to in these games, and that bodes very well for them into the rest of these Opens and going into their scrims. Like These are really good games for them to learn from uh when it comes to winning these game fives these close series because it's gonna be like that when they get to land too so you have to have experience in these moments in these games whether or not you think that they should be stomping a team or that they are expected to lose once you get yourself into position to be winning having the experience that you've gone there and you've done that against teams that people think that you're not as good as it's going to be crucial man for their success later on it was a huge win on cloud uh, with cloud nine and also i also I forgot to mention that this uh this semifinals was like was really weird i don't i don't know if i got a chance to watch the the whole thing but so game five goes to recharge and the game starts up and it's 3-0 in favor of cloud nine and nobody notices it they play out the entire game and the game ends fifth i want to say it was 50 to 46 cloud nine win but technically, because Cloud9 started with a three kill advantage, they didn't hit 50 kills. They hit 47 kills. So it was it was a bit of a cluster because we're trying to figure out what what the hell did we do? Did, did it what take happened? the win? Did it not? And what ended up happening was the admin said, "We'll reset." So Reversal Perfect actually had a kind of because in their mind they lost the matchup, but they actually kind of had a second chance to win it, and, and Cloud9 ended up winning in a more decisive faction. It was 50 to 39, actually, with the win. But that yeah. was a, that was a really strange event. Like I said, it started the game. There was some kind of glitch where the well, maybe enemy... in the prior series that they had to reset something and they had like a three kill lead. Maybe in that bittersweet series they had to do that. That's what I thought too. But then, but then, it's, it's, then somebody in the chat said, "Oh, this is a known issue." I was like, "Oh, I, I didn't know. I, I, I don't play enough customs and what." That's what I thought too. I thought in the previous series they had to like adjust from a reset and maybe that kind of yeah. for whatever reason maybe accidentally carried over but somebody else said it was it was like a known issue and i was like i i, I don't play that I, i'm a matchmaking yeah. kid you know i don't play that much yeah, hopefully i don't run into that man that sounds awful <laughs> I, I was more surprised that nobody looked at the scoreboard like like i would imagine like you know if, if you go forward down you know it's like well hold on why the hell do they have seven kills <laughs> yeah the rim? like nobody on either one of the teams nobody actually noticed, noticed that <laughs> which is actually oh, kind of crazy but didn't want to talk about that but eventually we get to the grand finals and um we said it before, Sentinels were the favorites. And getting into this grand finals, they looked like the favorites. And, uh, and I, 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 I kind of had a bit of a theory where I felt like through a lot of these matches, especially like the close ones, Cloud9 were very good at capitalizing on mistakes, capitalizing on like a, a first pick that happens and then just like, you know, pouncing on it where when they went up against Sentinels, Sentinels made very little mistakes and they just played lean halo is a, a pretty dominant win in favor of sentinels in that grand finals um this 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 tournament came to, down so a bit of a dramatic conclusion uh but i feel like um uh, i feel like maybe there was still a, uh, a little bit left in the tank for cloud nine it was late maybe a little bit tired a little bit exhausted especially having to go through that semifinals twice having to go through yep. pure they went through multiple game fives like uh it was um it was a tough grand finals to watch if you were a fan of cloud nine yeah, it's, it was a long day for them for sure. But I think that what you saw in that series was the difference between, uh, I mean, there's two teams who are pretty well practiced, but a team like Sentinels who has had a ton of experience and knows what they want to do at all times. Uh, there's a major difference between having a team who's practiced enough to, want to know what they want to do when they're winning a game and knowing what to do when they are behind in a game and how to get back into it and how to control it from there, which I think is where that difference might lie between those two teams. Uh, Sentinels has just been around like together for so long and those players have been playing together and have a much better understanding of what they're going to do on the map.
every single map than maybe Cloud9 does, but still Cloud9 is, I think, a, very, a team that's very capable of taking games off of Sentinels on their day. And, and maybe it was just a really, really long day for them. And they got, I mean, they got, they got to the grand finals in an open uh, again, right? Didn't they get to one in prior to, to London or prior to Arlington? Like, the, this is a team that can absolutely make waves against any team that they play. So um, I'm maybe not surprised to see that Sentinels win it pretty uh, handedly, but I think all of us kind of maybe wanted to see Cloud9 push another game five <laughs> uh, just for fun. It was so funny. At one point, uh, uh, I, I want to say it was Lethal in the chat. He was like, I, 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 bl I blame Tony and Active for all these game fires. Like, like, I'm like how, wait, how are we getting blamed? Because obviously they were, they were um, getting built. They come from the winner's finals to the grand finals. And already you have to, you know, wait the entire, you know, the entire lower bracket to come in. But with all the game fives, they have to wait even longer and it extended the tournament that apparently me and Tim got blamed for all the game fives. But yeah, uh, game fives, you guys attract them. Them, man, I swear <laughs> to God, every time I turn into LVT and you guys are casting, it's like, hey, Tony's gonna go to a game five. Uh, yeah, it's probably gonna go to a game five, man. Don't even ask the question anymore. <laughs> Well, I mean, they call complexion the people's champ, but I give the people what they want too. So, <laughs> you yeah, know, the, the, the chat wants game fives. We go give them game fives. Uh, but that was the conclusion of this uh, of this amazing tournament. It was the first HS Open online tournament since London. That literally started a week after we got back from London. Cheese, oh, that was crazy. But uh, I, I want to say, I want to say there's another one on Sunday, even though it's Father's Day. I think the, there's another one actually coming this Sunday and Thursday. So uh, we'll be right back yep. at it. We got to find out uh, who's going to get all these points, who's going to put themselves in a great position to uh, get into pool play or get themselves an easier road to bracket play when making it to Atlanta, which you already know. That's where, that's where, that's where your boy's from. That's where your boy is staying at right now. You're coming to my home this time. I ain't going to do no traveling. Um, <laughs> this was uh, why, why not be recognized? Why not be casted? Uh, but Jesus, from part one to part two, Again, I, I never got the chance to sit down and speak with you before. This has been fantastic. Uh, I, again, Thanks well for spoken, me, man. I well appreciate articulated. It. Like it was, this was great, honestly. Yeah, I had a ton of fun, man. I, thank you again for even having me. I super appreciate it, man. It's it's really good to to finally have a, just maybe a little bit of exposure and getting myself uh, familiar with the rest of the scene. Being able to talk to you guys, man, it's always fun. Love watching you, dude. Uh, you've had a, a very successful like rise between what you've been doing between like H five and now being able to to cast and doing what you're doing, man. Keep at it. It's so fun to watch you, Tony. Thank you so much. You're, you're so you're so kind. And again, I'm I'm apologize to you and 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 the uh, and the and the PD guys and the Passion United guys. I wasn't familiar with your game. I am now though. I'm gonna watch out for y'all coming next coming next week. Uh guys, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're on the YouTube, if you're on the Twitch. Leave it, uh, hey, if you have any questions or anything in the chat, you want to say anything to Bejesus before he goes, uh please put it out in the chat right now if you're watching live, and I'll catch you guys on the flip side.